Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. It's the midweek edition of the program. Today is Wednesday. Uh, the week, I mean the month even, seems to be uh, far going. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. On a sad note, this morning, unknown gunmen opened fire at a... Uh, and killed three policemen and left others injured at IBBI in Nasarawa, Chukuluku government area of Keduna State. Uh, the incident, according to residents of the area, happened at around 5 a.m. this morning when, uh, I, I mean, the policemen were on the night duty in front of the uh, soft drink making uh, outfit. Uh, the injured policemen were said to have been rushed to an undisclosed hospital while those killed were evacuated. Uh, as of this time, we couldn't reach the public relations officer of Kaduna State Police Command, talking about DSP Yakubu Sabu. Uh, but we will keep you posted on that uh, development. Of course, you need to know, uh, this is just IBBI it happens to be on Namdi Azikiwe uh, bypass, not far away from the city center. So uh, the issue of crime, this is hoping that the police will get the, the perpetrators and bring them to book. This is hoping too. We're hoping that with the change of uh, mantle of leadership at Operation Yaki, we will see things uh, change. But that seems not to be happening yet. But we hope to see that happen sooner than later. So many development within the polity, but let's leave all that one and let's go to the issue at stake. You remember. ASU, Academic Staff Union of Polytechnic, issued 21-day uh, ultimatum to the, to, the, to the federal government to either do what, it, what they are supposed to do or face another uh, labor action. You remember last year, ASU embarked on a warning strike, embarked on a warning strike. Uh, sometime around mid-November or late November, they call off the strike after so many front and back. But as it is, it seems the federal government is not meeting their demands. So they've given another uh, ultimatum again to the federal government to act or face another industrial uh, action. But this is coming after what we saw just recently. Asu, is it Asu? No. Uh, the, 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 what is it called? NLC, the General Labor Congress, on the issue of minimum wage. Before that, you had series of warning strike. But how long are we going to continue with this one strike? Again, you remember when we discussed the NLC issue here, uh, the Minister of Labor and Productivity seems sometimes not aware of even some of the happenings within the polity. The issue of the negotiating uh, theme, committee, on the minimum wage points to that. When the minister, talking about Dr. Chris Ngigi, was talking about not even being aware of even the deadline given by NLC. So, so many issues. So this morning, we shall be looking at a ASU impending warning strike. And this morning, we have with us the vice chairman of ASU Kaduna State Polytechnic chapter, talking about engineer Abu Bakr Sani Kazauri. Good morning, engineer. Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome to our studios. He's not alone. We have the publicity secretary of the association, Malam Abbas Mohammed. Abbas, good morning. Thank you very much. You are welcome to our studio. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let me let, let me start from you. I mean, you've had this one in strike, and eventually you called it off sometime in November last year. But here we are again with another. Uh, um, uh, uh, warning strike, impending, who will say warning strike. Why are we having this uh, uh, ultimatum now, again, just a few months after the last one? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, viewers. Good morning. Uh, the issue of the strike mm -hmm. uh, generally uh, is seen as one of the uh, means whereby uh, some of the grievances by the staff or by workers can be settled. Though there are other means available, but strike used to come up when all the necessary options are exhausted. Okay. Uh, we have tried to dialogue at both chapters level, maybe local level, and then at the national level. And the issues keep on impending due to certain uh, 
actions or inactions of government that is to look into the major grievances. Okay. Let's, for instance, take polytechnic education. Uh, the polytechnic major mandate is to train and provide uh, middle class uh, manpower. manpower. Okay. So the aim is completely defeated. Why, why do you say the aim is, uh, is yes, defeated? It is the justification is, mm. for instance, we have a lot of youth in Nigeria, it's on record, unemployment and all that. And people are, even the government is trying to look for alternative way of engaging this youth. Mm. So the polytechnic has the capacity to provide the training and polish this unemployed youth so that they can be productive to the society. Let's, for instance, most of the courses we run are highly technical whereby these students can end up as entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and can even be employers of labor. Let's, for instance, I'm civil engineer by practice. In my department, we have certain, a lot of trainings we can provide to Polish. Take about, uh, for not even the real engineering practice. We can train this on building. Building, train this youth to be engaging, direct, in collaboration, short course. Uh, short courses, okay. whereby they can be trained as, uh, that is to engage in block cleaning. And we have other options like carpentry, uh, joinery, uh, welding, fabrication, mm. go to electrical. They can be, even this GSM repair is something. So why do you think that is defeated? Is it that you are not the, achieving that the now? The problem is, mm. the problem is the capacity, the capacity. We, we are doing our best, but at which level? Okay. Let's, for instance, Kaduna Polytechnic with the size we have. If, to see, all our needs assessment are looked into and provided by the government, mm -hmm. I am very sure we can have a long way. We can move ahead to do a lot in helping the society. For instance, we have the first challenge in carrying capacity. Okay. Carrying capacity is, we all have a, based on the national policy on education and the MBTE requirement, a minimum standards at both local and international level. There are student to teacher ratio. And even the carrying capacity for a theater or for a classroom or laboratory. So look at the condition of our laboratory, look at the condition of our classes, and we still have the same, more admission. For instance, this current admission, we can admit, we can just admit a certain or a small amount of student, number of students compared to the applicants. Then if we, our all the needs assessment are looked into, I'm very sure the current capacity, the way we admit, the way we train, we can even have some short courses. Okay, we'll come back to some Thank of those issues. Much. Let me go to uh, the publicity secretary, Abbas Mohammed. Abbas, you, you, we've talked about this before, and there are so many issues raised on this uh, strike. But then somebody will ask, why are we still going on the strike? Because like the v vice chairman is, is saying, I mean, it, it seems not to be about your emolument. But probably, I mean, when people hear about strike, the first thing that comes to their mind is, okay, these lecturers are at it again. They want more money. What are some of those issues? Well, it is rather unfortunate that the government will allow the polytechnic lecturers to go on strike again. Okay. Because when you look at it, we have been on strike for many times. The 2014, that is the latest one, the, the one we went in November 2017, was the same reason why we went on strike in 2014. Okay. Every these are the same issues. They are still unresolved. Some of these issues, like my colleague just mentioned, is the issue of need assessment. Okay. There was a time the federal government set up a committee to go around polytechnics and colleges of education to see what are their basic needs, what, they, what do they want in order to improve their services. The committee submitted its report to the federal government. Until now that I am uh, talking to you, the government is yet to act on that report. Is it this present government or the previous government? Like I said, it was around 2014. Okay, that was but the previous it, government. Yes, but we know that this government is a continuum. It's a continuum. Mm -hmm. This government is here to act on this demand. Okay. There are other demands, such as the Polytechnic Act, for example. That Polytechnic Act bill has stayed in the National Assembly for too long. Early this year, the National Assembly, both chambers unanimously passed the bill. 
what is now awaited is the presidential assent. Up to now, the president has not assented to that bill. And we believe that Polytechnic Act, there are many things that are very positive to the, to the development of the Polytechnic sector. It's still lingering. Other lingering issue is this issue of uh, BSC HND dichotomy. Okay. The National Council of Education, some couple of years, had a meeting to remove this dichotomy between these two tests. Unfortunately, it was only done on the paper. It is yet to be implemented, though some state governments like Kano and Katsina, we are able to implement this dichotomy. They have removed the dichotomy. Some MDAs like those under the Minister of Interior have also tried to remove the dichotomy. It means when we remove the dichotomy, for those that don't know, it means the HND and degree graduate will enter at the same level and leave the service at the same level. As it is now, someone with HND, National Diplomacy, will only stop at grade level 14, while his counterpart who has a degree will, will terminate at grade level 17. So what the union want is let that, it, it should be removed. All of them should terminate at the same point. Mm -hmm. Even at the entry point, there are some level of discrimination. Unfortunately, even the polytechnic sector is also discriminating against its own HND graduates. Okay. That too should be removed. Then there is the issue of um, some negotiated allowances that the government is have failed to uh, to make sure it is the, the government is no more or funding some negotiated allowances. Like that's what we call the peculiar academic hazard allowance. Then there is the quantity 15 migration allowance. The government has failed to implement those allowances. Then recently there is this issue of IPPIS, the new integrated salary scale. Yeah. The government is saying every employee must enroll. Yes, we are not against enrolling into the IPPI IPPIS scheme. But what we want, there are some agree areas that we need to iron out. And there was a negotiation between the union and the federal government on this issue, especially MBTE, Office of the Accountant uh, General of the Federation, the IPPI office. All of a sudden, one day, the government just invited a meeting. They invited MBTE, IPPIS. They refused to invite the union. Okay. This is the fact that they know a negotiation is going on with the union. They now say that by, by October, every employee in the polytechnic sector must enroll into IPPIS. So is it that if they have invited the union, the union will have kicked against it or what? The, like I said, there was a negotiation between oh, the going. union okay. and IPPIS office to, to resolve some green areas. areas. Okay. So the negotiation is still ongoing. All of a sudden, the union just heard that the government is now saying everybody must, must enter. Enrolled. While in the negotiation, it was agreed that those three areas must be Enrolled. first ironed out. Okay. So these are some of the major issues why the lecturers say, why the union say, okay, the government is not ready. The issue of renegotiation, there is what, because when we suspended the strike, there's what, what, what do they call memorandum of agreement or memorandum of understanding, signed between the union and the government. It was agreed that this issue will be reviewed. They now form what they call rapid response team that is supposed to be meeting with the union every month. But unfortunately, in nearly a year, this meeting only had about three times. The government is not ready to listen to that. So the union say, well, let us give them the only language they understand. Well, the only language they understand. Engineer, okay, let me come to you. Because people will say, well, there are many avenues of resolving these issues. People will also say, I mean, you've gone on strike several times without achieving uh, a, 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 anything. Why shouldn't we do away with strike? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, this is a very uh, nice question. Uh, in fact, nobody, no worker want to engage in strike. No okay. Nobody want to engage. Uh, actually, strike used to come as a reaction to certain actions. That is, as I said earlier, when all options mostly failed. These negotiations as said by my, uh, the publicity sector, sector has been ongoing. We negotiate, renegotiate. Then sometimes it went to the extent of even we have to down to. Uh, let me make comparison with the current NLC. This issue of minimum wage have taken so long it ha to the extent that the NLC has to go on one strike and still Despite the call of the one strike, st still the issue is lingering. The government is kicking, saying this, while and, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the labor is saying this. So 
coming back to our issue is still the same thing. We tried, negotiate, tried, negotiate, but still they don't listen. Thank you. How has it come to you? We know Kaduna Polytechnic, I mean, you are from Kaduna Polytechnic, we know this is a national issue. Right? It's not just a, a, a Kaduna Polytechnic, but wherever you go, some of these issues remain almost the same thing. The issue of carrying capacity, for instance, the issue of, um, uh, um, um, I mean, uh, I don't know what adjective to use, because when you go to the classroom sometimes, you go to the laboratories, I mean, you go to uh, what, we, what we call, what we, yes, let's use the laboratory for all of that. I mean, you see equipment or uh, teaching and learning uh, materials that were as old as the institution themselves. Now, in the case of Kandapal Technic, Kenapol Technic used to be owned by Northern Nigeria. One would have expected that the 19 other state governors contribute because people will tell you all around the world the government alone cannot do it. In some places, the alumni contribute their own quarter. Are we saying we are not even seeing this? That's by the fight. Of course, we know can't cut for the also uh, generate uh, inter, uh, revenue in, in, internally. Can these things go a long way in at least alleviating some of this problem internally? Well, unfortunately, yes, I agree. Some of these issues are supposed to be resolved even without the problem. Mm. But unfortunately, our IGR as the polytechnic is mostly relied on the school fees paid by students. Okay. Our school fees is just paid once in a year. So once the school exhausts those mm. IGR, there is a problem of finance. Then you are talking about maybe external assistance. Yes. Like alumni, 19 Northern State Governors. Mm. Yes, recently I know. Ted Fund and others. And yes. That. Recently the rector was making, he made a move. Okay. Through the former head of state general, Abdul Salam Abubakar, who was an alumni of the institution. Mm. That what can you do as an alumni to help this institution? The former head of state now wrote letters to all the 19 Northern State Governors. Governors. It was the problems of Kano Protected was divided into about 19 to, to, to 20. So that it is accepted. Each state governor will say, okay, I will do this. I will take this. I will take this. Mm. I will take that. Okay. So he wrote the letter to all the 19 Northern State Governors. As of today, I know so far, based on my logic, just the governor of Jigal State was the one that responded. Badaru. Yes, Malam mm. Badaru. He responded. He, was, he will rehabilitate or renovate the Department of uh, Estate, Estate Management okay. in CES. Okay. They have already sent a contractor has been mobilized. So far, he's the only person that have responded. Out of the 19 Northern State Out of the 19 Northern State So we hope maybe in the future they will respond. There are other donors. Unfortunately, the Polytechnic is not that low key like the university sector to have other donors, like the MacArthur Foundation, mm. international donors. When you go to some institutions like universities, you see different projects bringing up by NGOs, by Central Bank, NMPC, some banks, private individuals who are helping, like when you go to Bioniversity, you know, just recently a school of uh, business, business was launched. Mm -hmm. By Dangote. By Dangote, he sank billions of naira. No. When, you, when you go to AB, you see many buildings like uh, hostels being built by some state governors, by individuals, by but unfortunately, Polytechnic is not that lucky to have that opportunity. So actually, government alone cannot fund all these things. We are talking about carrying capacity, but like in Kaduna Polytechnic, you mentioned just recently the, rec the management also signed an MOU with a private developer to develop students' uh, hostel. Okay. 2,200 bed space capacity hostel. It's like a private something. Then this, the same thing again, the management has also signed an MOU with, with an organization to build some houses. Like a that, that is a PPP something, yeah. public private partnership scheme. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the effort the management is now doing to see that investors other than the federal government, who is the owner of the institution, mm -hmm. are making their own effort in order to assist the politician. Well, this is a half hour line of the program. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go to other issues and eventually open the lines for you to be part of the program. Remain with us. in HD on Star Times. Watch Arsenal. 
shows you AC Milan Sevilla Olympic Marseille and other top clubs in Europe battle for glory in the Europa League enjoy all these and over 75 exciting channels for just 1900 naira on the star times classic bouquet star times enjoy digital life Thank you for being there. The program is Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And this morning, we are reaching you from our Kaduna studios. And we are looking at the ASUM Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics impending warning strike to the federal government. And we have with us this morning the Vice Chairman of ASU Kaduna Polytechnic Chapter, Abubakar Sani Kazauri, uh, engineer, let me add, and uh, the Publicity Secretary, Malam Abbas Mohammed. Well, let me come to you. I mean, so many issues raised there, and from what Abbas have said so far. I mean, Poly, Kaduna Polytechnic, uh, we can only say next to maybe Yaba Polytechnic has churned out so many people, so many people. I mean, even among people who are aspiring to be presidents today, we have people who are uh, an alumnus of uh, uh, Cat Poly. I mean, is it that we are not reaching out enough to them? Like I've said, I mean, my Cato Foundation, so many foreign distinctions that ordinarily should be. This is a technical institution that should be attracting so much. Why do you think we are not attracting so much uh, uh, people that could actually give us that uh, uh, push? Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Cat Poly, or generally the Polytechnic poly sector. Technic sector. Mm. There is this issue of uh, alumni mm. and certain collaborations are ongoing. Uh, like just recently, uh, Kaduna Polytechnic has fully reactivated its alumni. Uh, association okay. and uh, as just the publicity secretary uh, mentioned the, uh, this, uh, sorry, uh, General Abdul Salam Abakar was contacted and uh, I can boldly say that I'm also an alumni of the institution okay and uh, having done my diploma HND all there so the issue is funding of education is a sole responsibility of government mm -hmm. Although it can be a other other sectors can also come in to assist, but the major thing should be for government. In a situation whereby the government is not committed to its major responsibility, actually you can expect the alumni to do the needful. Actually, like let me recall uh, December 2006, there was issue of this general shortfall, which affected virtually all the polytechnics. Okay, shortfall in Short finance? In finance, okay. in finance. Like uh, Kaduna Polytechnic at that time, we were expecting to have, but uh, some to, up to certain amount, but the management received not up to half of what they were expecting, December 2006. From the federal from government? The, from the federal government. Okay. And actually, even the worker salary in Kaduna Polytechnic that very month, December two, uh, two, 2016, mm -hmm. was divided into four. We have to take a quarter of our salary. We wanted to down to the letter the rector has to, the former rector then has to even come to the Congress. A lot of questions were asked. The letter we have to realize that we have to go with that quarter part of our salary. We sacrificed. 
And then later we continued, and it was splitted until it is in. So as a result of that, a leg, le, two uh, major, le, uh, a legitimate allowance, mm -hmm. which is part of the workers' take home, was removed from the salary. Up to now, up to now, I'm talking that salary has not been the balance has not been that, paid. No, the, the okay. that allowance okay, the, okay. has not been fully reinstated. Okay. Normally, the like when the selector came, that's the uh, condition continued to improve. It's only p part of maybe certain percentage of that uh, amount mm -hmm. is uh, used to be sent to this. That's why we want, if with this shortfall, is look, it's looking like the federal government is adding an unnecessary pressure mm -hmm. to the management of these institutions. For instance, if with shortfall, how can you balance with uh, that is the workers' agitation and even first the major business of the, of running the institution. The institution. So now, I'm on the opinion that if the government can meet up to the expectation, I think all these local issues can be automatically resolved. So the IGR generated can be employed or can be used for other purposes that can benefit uh, the system, improve the system, and then uh, have uh, uh, that is in developing the community. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, let me come to you. Way back while we were in school, we know when there are issues like this, we are so sensitized that sometimes we take the fact as students, not even our lecturers. We don't allow, allow, allow our lecturers to go on strike. I mean, is it not? Because I know now, even when lecturers start talking about strike, your own students will be among the first set to start saying, why should you go on strike? <laughs> there seems to be the ones who even antagonize you first, even before the larger society. Mm -hmm. Is it that you lecturers are not sensitizing your students enough to know what the plight is? Where a situation is usually where I come to see you and I see you lecturing, some of your students are sitting on the floor. <laughs> is it that you guys are not sensitizing your students enough to know these issues for them to even to take the gauntlet and fight the cause? Yes, actually, the issue of sensitizing the student is at its very low stage. Okay. Because as far as the students are concerned, they think any time lecturers want to go on strike is mm -hmm. about their own personal interest. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that some of the demands are for their own good. For example, the needs assessment we are talking about yeah. has to do with uh, whatever is needed for conducive teaching and learning in the institution mm -hmm. should be provided. A classroom, enough that will take enough students because the, the polytechnic is supposed to be the training manpower. When you go to our laboratories, they are in a very sorry stage. The student cannot get the technical knowledge because that's why sometimes, because the major difference between the polytechnic and the university system is that the, the polytechnic student is supposed to use his hand to work. Yeah, he he is supposed to be aspect. an employer of labor, not an employee. Okay. The but practical is, aspect. The of practical it. aspect is not there. So he is not. Because at the end of the day, the lecturer will receive his normal salary, uh, salary normal while the student is not getting what he is supposed to get. You will be trained to have big students. Sometimes uh, examination will, will be done. There will be, no, there will be no proper moderation. There are hostel when you go to some of the hostels. Because there was a time our rector went to the student's hostel, he said it that Sometimes it is better to live in a war zone than to live in this student's hostel. The student is in a state is the hostel is in a state of disrepair. Fair opportunity situation. Not not to talk about the room that you're supposed to have two, three people. You see you are un having an uncountable number of number students of in a room, no ventilation, no head. So even head work. So some of the strikes are for this info because the need assessment will make sure it, it takes care of this the hostel, the laboratories, the classroom, even the classroom, sometimes you see, especially during the dry season, you cannot just teach. You see the condition very hot. No no fans, even the fans is there, no light. For example, sometimes, now very soon, our if, uh, when even students are writing their examination, for example, you see maybe the exam is around four. It's a three-hour paper. And by six, six or five, you see the place is, is, is very dark. And the class, there is no light. You don't have any option than to stop the examination. You have cheated the student because of the time. Um, but that is the hard way becomes the only way. 
Because the only way they can use to see, maybe you say they should own their handset. It's another form of exam. Mm. So you have to stop this. So these are some of the things that we want the government and any other person that is involved to come and do so that there will be conducive teaching and learning. Uh, and again, the issue of uh, offices for staff. Okay. Many staff in the project don't have office. I see, I see a situation where three, four, five lecturers are put, put up in. Put in a staff room, for example, not as big as this studio. You see five lecturers there. That is if you are even lucky or something. To have. I'm thinking some don't even have where they will stay and say this is an office. Wow. When you go to the office, you know this is not an office for a lecturer. You just see, like you said, like a staff room. Mm -hmm. How will you enjoy your work? Examination officers. Sometimes, in fact, the, the situation is very terrible. And if a, a lecturer don't have an office, there's no way he can effectively teach students what he is supposed to teach. So the student should know that the strike or any action taken by the union is also for them. In fact, they will benefit more than the lecturers. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean, but why do you think the students are not sensitized enough? Because like I said from the beginning, in our days in school, we are even aware of these issues even before the lecturers talk about it. So we come out and say, look, we are not going to take this, we are not going to take this, and what it is. So you fight on behalf of your lecturers. But we are not seeing that uh, these days. Why do you think the students are not sensitized enough? Yes. Or uh, not aware of the situation? Uh, thank you very much. That's a very interesting question. Uh, I remember I was also the president of my state union. OK. And you were a unionist. Yes, during <laughs> my time as a student. student. And then at, at uh, the student union government mm -hmm. also, I was serving as a College of Engineering representative there. Okay. So, uh, in conclusion, or just in a short way, is the vibrancy. Okay. The vibrancy of the student before and now is uh, not uh, the same. It's not uh, quite impressive. Maybe it's the nature of the uh, due to lack of motivation or whatever. Or certain problem challenges. Your professors, let me tell you something. Uh, at our own time, the students, most of the facilities are sometimes in a better condition. Mm. Then, in addition to that, also, the students are not hungry as now. Okay. And other things, mm. many other things. So, certain challenges. Like now, by Monday, we are expected to start even examination. But go and see how many of them were able oh, to oh, even oh, meet the de oh, deadline. The, the, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Some people say in other times, yes. it is when you are when you are hungry that you even demand for your right. Mm. It is when things are really bad that because of course in our days in school, yes. of course a, a room of two become a room of three. Yes. But at least, but, but now I go I go back to institutions and I see a room where three of us stayed and we were even complaining. It was too much. Yes. Now you're having seven, eight, nine people staying in, in, in that place. Yes. Shouldn't that be what should motivate this student to go out there and say, no, this must not be? No, the issue is, uh, for instance, I remember last, uh, just recently, mm -hmm. it's all over the news that a uh, card police student moved to close the gate to the institution mm -hmm. due to power, power, yeah. power failure. Yeah. Just, uh, that's the, uh, that is for over a week without uh, listening to uh, no water, no this. So that's one is taken seriously. But the issue is, even the students are not as confident as people, as, it used as to be. bold as before to come out to say the, to say whatever the... Some people say it's the fault of the lecturer. Yeah, the no, lecturers. it's okay. It can be a fault of the lecturer, actually. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we can, let's, let's join our viewers to be part of the program. Hello. Have a caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the program. Your name and where you're calling from? Comrade Anachi from Brunichi. Comrade Anachi, thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Yes. You see, Why do you think so? Government is a education. If polytechnic, if colleges of education have their own uh, commission, mm. university have their own commission. I see no reason why polytechnic is being matched with colleges of technology. I mean, it's, 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 it's embarrassing, honestly. Then secondly, this issue of strike, I think, it is the union that's supposed to take option for that strike. They can organize a peaceful demonstration within the campus, not outside the campus, so that hoodlums will not hijack the strike. They will organize it, let's say, 
Let's give other people the opportunity to speak. Yes. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. When you call in, please, the moment you are connected, keep the volume of your TV set down uh, so that we can have an effective uh, communication. If the volume of your TV set is uh, high, don't try to listen to yourself via the TV set, please. If you do that, we may not uh, get you effectively. Well, uh, that caller there from Brendan Kirby talking about, uh, I mean, peaceful protests. Mm -hmm. At least, organize yourself protest to the rector's office. But is this actually the rector's problem? <laughs> <laughs> so in addition to what uh, this in, mm -hmm. I said earlier mm -hmm. that the strike is usually the last, the last result. option. Okay. I remember in Kaduna Polytechnic locally, we had series of such protests. Protest. Okay. We okay. even went ahead. Yeah. Let's speak this caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. We lost that caller. Another okay. caller here. Hello, good morning. Uh oh, we lost that caller too. Uh, I hope the problem is not uh, okay. from here. Okay. Yeah. So the issue is, uh, we 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 tried that, and we even went ahead to demonstration to picketing. Okay. I remember during the, the uh, tenure of the former rector, uh, we went, academic staff, uh, this in, board director, the BASA, and registrar, mm. were picketed. Okay. Then at the end of the picketing, the, this in, what is coming? And at the end, finally, finally, is it director's problem? Or do you expect us to go and picket the Mr. President or Minister of Education? Or Minister of Education. Or Minister of Labor. Or this, it's not that one. It's not impossible. It's not I remember possible. I mean, when, when uh, uh, some of your members were actually tear gas in Abuja <laughs> when they went on the project. Let's see if we can take this as our last caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Dropped again. Well, let's leave it. All right for want of time, because our guests need to be somewhere else uh, in the next few minutes. Abbas, this is another 21 days, or is it 21, 20 days? 21, 21 days. starting from 2nd October. October, yes. So it is elapsing next week. Next week. So week should, should the federal government not act? What next? Well, we have already told the federal government, once it failed to act, there will be a complete shutdown of the whole system. Indefinite strike. And we don't want it. Even we, the lecturers, we don't want that strike. But it seems it is the only option. The option. And you know, do you see the federal government responding to your ultimatum? Actually, uh, going by past experiences. Uh, the nature. I just recently, uh, during the the my earlier statement, mm -hmm. I made a reference to labor, NLC. If the NLC. That is the whole label, national body. National body. Yeah. If they can have an agreement with government and then... Hello? Okay, let's take this passage. Hello, good morning. Mm -hmm. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the program. Your name and where you're calling from? Mohamed Abdullah, you're calling from Madame Marti. Okay, Mohamed Abdullah, thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning, your guest there. Good morning. Honestly, I want to advise the federal government. Federal government needs to do something about the federal institution. Okay. okay.
thank you very much. Mohamed Abdullah there from Adamawa. What about engineer? If I let you go, and people will say, we have lawmakers. I mean, the National Assembly is there. Why can't the uh, ASU, for instance, uh, make certain uh, moves to the to the lawmakers? Yes, uh, uh, like uh, the publicity sector in my chapter mm -hmm. earlier said. One of the major problems we want federal government to address so certain things, most of them supposed to be constitutional. Yeah. He made mention of Polytechnic Act. So mm. some of the problems would be solved by fully uh, implementing the provisions of that Polytechnic Act. Act. Because the earlier one we had, since during the this is, since the first time of uh, this in Polytechnic, it has been, it has already been. And there's the development achievements, and we have to counter, we have to, we are, comp we are, we are competing because the, pro the students we produce here are going to, sa to face certain wins. compared okay. to other products. In I fact, if you if, if other some of the advanced nations, mm -hmm. I remember they have to be this, same, but unfortunately, we keep on saying, so the Senate, uh, the National Assembly has already done their own part. They have already, they have exactly. already, they since passed, uh, read the past reading, everything. They already passed it, everything. It's okay. just the assenting. What By is the taking, president. What is taking time for this? <laughs> then in addition, mm. gazetting some of this something. Okay. Like the legitimate allowance, peculiar and uh, the, the, the decent hazard allowance. It's a legitimate something agreed by government, but just gazetted. That is why they, like I remember recently, the government uh, in action, they just invited, they, they just had uh, the meeting recently by, with the council chairman of the polytechnic, uh, that is of the polytechnic, so they should go and source from IGR. So if they can so they defer such allowances, how can such allowances be paid from IGR? Engineer Abu Bakr Saini Kazaure is the vice chairman Association, the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnic, Kaduna Polytechnic Chapter. Thank you very much for your time okay, this morning. Okay, thank you very much. Malam Abbas is the Publicity Secretary of the Union. Abbas, thank you very thank much you very uh, for your time. Thank you. Well, yeah, viewer, that is where we call it a day for today. But tomorrow, God willing, let's do it again. We are hoping uh, to have security agents. Let's talk about how prepared are the security agents for 2019. If Three policemen could be mowed down in Kaduna city center this morning. Then what is left of the common man? A policeman who is armed to the teeth, to the teeth. A policeman who is on guard, on duty as it is. So we are hoping that we all be safe. But then we are all in God's hands. Better safe than sorry. Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kadel, thank you for investing your time with us. Let's do it again tomorrow. God's willing. Good morning. <laughs>